Play to potential. Nugget. You know, in the book, you also talk about uh, uh, the work of uh, Rob Gray, you know, who directs the mm-hmm. Perception and Action Lab at Arizona State University. And uh, you talk about this notion of uh, unlearning and you speak about action slips, you know, things that we sort of do by default, especially in a high pressure environment. I was curious about, uh, you know, in your pursuit towards learning these five uh, new skills, what have you learned about unlearning? You know, you spoke about adults having that cognitive component about, you know, like you spoke about language. Kids just speak while we sort of in tech, uh, sort of try to look at how it fits in with the paradigms we have, etc. So what have you learned about unlearning effectively, especially when we are, you know, learning something new? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and first of all, I'm not, you know, unlearning is, is a strange word. It's, it's not something that is completely, you know, agreed upon in, in the scientific world or the literature and whether it even, whether unlearning is something distinct from simply learning a new thing is, is sort of a, I, I mean, semantically it makes sense, but, but whether there's, whether it's an actually different process, I think is, is, is not known. Um, but I, you know, it makes me think of a, a experiment I did, in, which I didn't mention too much in the book. But I, um, as I mentioned, I was I was a keen cyclist, so I had heard about a guy who's a, a rocket scientist in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and he had this. Uh, I was doing this little experiment with a backwards bicycle, and, and what I what I mean by that is that when you turn the handlebars left, the bike <sighs> actually steers to the right. Um, this is something that has been used at various carnivals in, in countries like England or, or America. And, and, and usually, you know, the, the person will offer you $5 or something if you, if you can do it correctly, if you can succeed at riding this thing. So people, the punters go up and say, yeah, I can do that. And of course, then they lose their, their money. So, um, so, but to me, it was just a fascinating example of this unlearning because I had had many years of knowing how to ride a bike. That was burned into my brain. I could ride no handed. I could ride, you know, doing something else. I could, didn't have to think about it at all. So I, I, I was under the mistaken impression that that would give me a leg up in trying to learn this, this variation on a bicycle. When in fact, the opposite, the opposite was actually true. It was probably harder for me to learn that new thing because I had so much of this previous, you know, sort of program running on, on my desktop that it was, it was actually impossible for me to do more than simply sit on the bike. The moment I tried to move just a little bit, my whole internal sense of balance was, was thrown off and I was, was basically falling. Uh, we, we did this on the, on the grass because mm-hmm. he actually knew that this would happen. So he, he, one of the points he made is that his children were actually able to learn it faster than he was not necessarily because they're amazing geniuses, but because they've had less experience at riding a traditional bicycle. So they had less to unlearn. So, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I don't really know that there's anything that different about unlearning it, that you, you sort of have to do it the hard way. I mean, he, my rocket scientist friend learned to ride it. It took him about six months, which is probably longer than it takes to learn to ride an actual bicycle. So, um, but you know, he just little daily bouts of, of practice. And I mean, there was, there was sort of no secret, beyond that. So I think, Mm -hmm. but to your point, there, there were moments teachers would give me particular, particular trip uh, tricks to sort of help me pass things that were get past things that were, you know, sort of habits in a way that I, for example, when I was, I was trying to sing, I would have trouble with a certain high note. And as the high note was approaching, this sent a signal to my, to my brain that, Oh my, Oh my God, there's this high note coming. I, I started to panic. My body tensed up. I would sort of raise my neck like a giraffe to try to reach this high sound. All of those things were tremendously counterproductive toward actually producing that note. So my teacher would have me do this little sort of, you know, uh, just a, a, you know, kind of a corrective motion to, as the high note was approaching to, to bend my knees and dip slightly down. And that just sort of, you know, for whatever reason it, it worked, it made me stop thinking about the high note. I, I concentrated again on instead on, on sort of dipping, going down and counterintuitively that actually made it easier to produce those high notes. So wh- whether that was a form of unlearning, I'm not, I'm not sure, but 
sometimes it's just a matter of, of disrupting mm. a habit that you have. And those habits can be very hard to disrupt, but, but there are, there are ways and sometimes, but sometimes it just involves many months of, of practice. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, if you, I, I don't know if you drove while you were, well, you're on the, you're on the left side anyway, but you know, for a person, a person going from a country that has right-hand side drive to left-hand side drive, it's the same, same idea. No, I, had, I had this issue when I was, uh, when I first came to the U S I remember yes. uh, we were out, we were going out for a team lunch when I was at McKinsey and I remember let's, I telling them, let's take my car. And I got into my car with three colleagues and suddenly my sort of the India, I, I started having a conversation with them as I took the car out. And I think my Indian driving instincts came in and for, <laughs> for, for a good 10 seconds, I was on the wrong side of the road and my colleagues sort of were nudging me, you know, pointing, uh, you know, pointing to me, pointing fingers. And I wasn't really getting at, uh, I wasn't really getting it. Uh, and then one of them had to forcibly, the guy sitting next to me forcibly took the wheel and moved me back to the lane. That's when I realized, <laughs> that, oops. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I guess. And, and this sort of, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier about, you know, it, it's good when learning a motor skill to not think about it. I mean, this is a case with unlearning that actually is beneficial to think about it because you need to override that existing behavior that is lurking within your body and actually pay some conscious attention. Whereas, and then I, I would estimate over time that it, it gradually became instinctual. Although like, like Rob Gray says, there could be these action slips in a moment where you're distracted or panicked, you might revert to that, that old behavior. And, and uh, you know, luckily it, it, you had colleagues with you in the car. <laughs> <laughs> True. 